Welcome everybody. Today is a special day. We're out in a not necessarily special field, but we tried some special stuff here. So just a quick rundown. Um, we have a no-till, part no-till, part full-till, okay? And I have the expert conservation man from Shortland Egg, Matt Omekin. Hello everybody. Okay, and someone even more special. Sorry, Matt. Emma. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at, uh, we're gonna do, take a look at two things, right? We're gonna look at the actual above ground plants and we're gonna take a look at what's happening below ground with a fully tilled, with high speed disc and full no-till. And you're coming with. Let's go. Maybe it's just a crop that you put in, you know, but he had rejuvenated that spirit of. We're in a spot right now that had uh, previous year was rye for harvest, so it had a full rate of rye. We took that off. We put a five-way mix of cover crop in from Matt, and uh, we then let that grow, and it got it got really tall, probably just up to my hips, and we tilled some of that. And we wanted to try what try to see what the difference would be, tilled versus non-tilled. So we're we're working right here and talking about this stuff that was tilled and then terminated, and we're gonna go over to the true no-till. And then maybe Matt will get real excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Two simple changes. And that was, if you're gonna till the ground, go as deep as you can. Yeah. Okay? This might go against every <laughs> conservation. I'm still here, I didn't start off <laughs> fire yet. <laughs> so you till, till it as deep as you can for soybeans for a quick, short-term you know, solution to yield. And then, when you're planting soybeans, put as little pressure on those seeds with your with your downforce and your closing as possible yeah to the point where my 2020 monitor was screaming at me all the time but i kept digging when kept you say digging. screaming like hey we're not getting that seed you down don't have enough down pressure you don't have enough down pressure you're losing ground contact you it's constant so <laughs> ignore <laughs> ignore yeah that's all i did but what i did was dig a lot and i walked behind my planter a lot but i had my planter depth set to 1.5 inches but i was actually putting it in at one inch Wow. That's how light it was, and I was just barely covering it. And I can tell you already, we have made um, large improvements in the way that carrot looks compared to last year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and the amount of nutrients we can take out. So. Well, the firmness should make a lot of sense, right? Because, like, the rule of thumb when it comes to soybeans, it's a very lazy run. It's just, it's like that couch potato at home. You know, it's like, hey, I'm not going to just fit myself a bowl of potato chips at a time. Just give me the whole bag because I'm not going to get up. And that's what these beans want to have is they want the bag of potato chips when it comes to fluffy ground set in front of them. If you restrict them in any sort of the way with uh, any little compaction, even if you're pressing them down too tight, too firm, then they're just not going to make their full They don't potential. like that at all. No, they, they do want not like that. They want fluff. So yeah, we've learned a lot in just that year and I'm, I'm really excited to see how these yield now considering yeah. hearing you know some of those stories of too much down pressure and it's 15 bushel by just taking some off isn't it one change i know <laughs> isn't it amazing that each year there seems to be some really revolutionary way to yeah, grow yeah. beans whereas like back in the 90s when our dads were <laughs> doing this they were pounding out like two two and a half bags per I acre know, I and know. just let her go <laughs> just, yeah and <clears throat> another thing that gets for me anyway there's so many products on the market. Oh, you you spray these PGRs, you spray this, you spray this micro pack at this time, and your your beans will grow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out the window if you ask me. You start down with the roots. No, absolutely. And you know, speaking in retail too, it's you really got to navigate. It's it's literally a sea, a sea oh. of just <laughs> this is gonna get you five. This is gonna get you three. And you really got to hone in on like what's really going to give the best bang for your buck but like you said what we like to focus on is, is like what's the environment they're getting put into yeah. first is for focus number one because a lot of things yeah it really can really whitewash a lot of the issues but it's per season mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily great on the checkbook on a per season basis right and what, what i learned last year was all that stuff that i sprayed and all those different things i tried to do to that plant was just mitigated by the way i planted it ah so it was that. Like it. it was that simple. I planted it wrong. Make sure that gets in the final <laughs> edit. See this? You could wow. So you could see that. <laughs> I got thrown off balance. Yeah. Stay, stay focused, right? Matt. Matt. This is called Jang. Now somebody could say like Matt, a rock hit that. 
You see this in compaction too, where all those ruts can do is they can hit only a seam and they just can only follow that narrow, that narrow profile and they just stay smushed and packed in. And then those ruts start going only side to side instead of going down like they want to. Now, this is something too, a lot of conservation uh, people would say like, but Matt, look at, there's worms in there. It must mean it's good. Not necessarily. Worms can muster up a lot of energy and they can go through a lot of stuff, but that doesn't give the excuse of what we're seeing with this compaction going on. The worms are doing a great job aerating all this and that probably also assists with those ruts able to get through this tight zone and getting down into the money hole fluff. But you can see right here, they got a lot of work to do. And there's that jaying I was talking about before. This plant literally followed an old wormhole and uh, was able to go side to side finally, but yeah. So let's take a look at um, the cover crop no-till soybeans and this is one we dug up from this no-till heavily cover cropped area okay you hold that man these are the ones we dug up and i'll get you some yeah we got these dug up from over there and this is this is a pretty nice one now somebody would right exactly somebody would say like matt i don't see what the big difference is like you got a well-developed tap rut the carrot as our mutual friend yep. Wade would like to say <laughs> and you get so you can see it's kind of like the same range but the big difference is is when we broke up the clods we lost a lot of ruts and we just don't see the mut the robust rut mass on here as we see on here where this soil fell loose so that should give you a first indication that this has a better profile to expand its roots and develop finer roots whereas this one is doing a great job but it you know it's struggling just a little bit and what adam pointed out before and i don't want to steal his thunder because this is your show afterwards <laughs> or after all is that there's so many fibrous ruts and these are going at great angles going downward so they can find more nutrients more moisture okay that's that's huge because i've dug up a lot of soybean plants this year but i haven't been up in this patch very much okay i was kind of waiting for you oh yeah oh. i know <laughs> so that was my initial thought is holy cow maybe i should have paid more attention to this field because look at the amount of little fibrous roots i even think wade will be excited about that i think i think wade would be super excited yeah and now these look good you yes. know I, I think these look good and they're going to yield quite well but uh just to see the activity below ground so now it's a matter of what are these going to produce, right? And I have them set up, combine yield data. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some good yield data. Now, that isn't really everything, though, is it? What because is... long term, what can happen here? Like well, when you see stuff 10 plus years like this. You know, <laughs> it's it's the degradation of that soil. So what Adam's alluding to is, is that the width of a dime is 10 years worth of topsoil. That's how long it takes for the width of a dime worth of topsoil to develop. Wow. And what's even what's even more of a wow is that same width of a dime is a ton per acre. So when you're doing your snap plus and you see that you lost a ton and a half, maybe you lost up to three ton, you're still below the threshold of what's accepted by the county, but that's 30 years worth of topsoil you mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. So you gotta wait another 30 years to get that all back. And somebody could say like, ah, this soil runs deep. What's going to be the big deal? Well, if it gets depleted faster than it's replenished, then that's extra fertilizer, sure. that's extra applications, that's more tech that you get throw into that crop to make sure that you maintain your yeah. maintain the yield that you're expecting. Tool. The little digger tool. Yeah, yeah, go get the digger tool. Get yourself something that you can dig underneath because it's really cute to look at stuff that's above ground, but it's even better to see what's going on below ground. Okay, this, this is the same thing you did over there but, and, uh, but instead, we're right here, we're in the now. So you can see that this was undisturbed and this is where the cover crop was terminated. You can't really decipher where that compaction line is. Now remember what I said before that the, the typical compaction layer is down a little bit deeper and you can see where it kind of split right here just a little bit. But you can tell that there's immediate difference. You have roots everywhere. Now somebody could say like, hey Matt, those are probably from the old cover crops. When it comes to those fibrous roots, they're they're long gone. The worms and the fungi, everything destroyed them. Now, when I say fungi, there's beneficial 
fun guy going on. I don't know if you can really tell, like there's a white hue around these ruts. These are secondary ruts that play as um, a host on the main uh, root type right here to get extra nutrients and extra water. Now some of these, and I can't tell if it's this one or not, but that's called mycorrhizal fungi. That's a beneficial fungi that creates more fibrous roots that leach off of the main root. So when you see stuff like that, that's a big benefit. And now look at this clod right here. So you saw, you saw that you had a lot of the roots that stayed right here and you only saw like a few down here. Well, it's just an explosion. Uh, this plants are just puking out ruts and they have free range of wherever they want to go so that's like the main immediate difference that you see in this and adam i don't know if you want to comment on it any further but like <laughs> it, it's, it's a, a it's completely different it's completely different and it didn't take me long on that other one to to say right where we speed this right you know, down to the line exactly now it's like everybody likes the performance of what the crops look up on top but it's kind of like i ask whether it's a farmer or it's a student, you show them something like this and you and you say, which one would you plant crops into? Almost everybody picks the one that's got looser looking soil and that's got a great <laughs> odor, <laughs> odor to it too. And the next thing, you gotta start playing around with the stuff. Um, safely put the knife away. But you gotta start playing around with the stuff, right? Handle it, look at the differences, and I'm not even kidding. At soil sample season in the fall, you can definitely tell this, where you have fields that have high organic matter versus low organic matter. When you have something that's got a lot of critters in it, you can smell it. It's really got a earthy smell to it. If you have something where it doesn't have a lot of life to it, it just kind of smells stale, smells like dirt, but not the dirt that you want it to smell like. So let's do a quick node count on these, okay? Take it away. Full till, okay? Full till actually twice covered with a high speed disc. We're gonna we're actually gonna rip the rip these off, okay? Because I really I'm really interested in node seven through thirteen. So start I ripping just, those off. I just let Adam just do his magic here. Well I don't it's so just, just a visually about the main stem. Yeah, for nodes. Like main stem nodes, that's what I'm after. Can I do it too dad for this one? Yeah go ahead. <laughs> I thought I was the assistant dad. <laughs> Now, some people would say, like, obviously you guys hand selected these. It's like, no, Adam purposely said, Matt, stay back. I'll dig these. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start at the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And 19 is on the way. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I'll, I'll hang on to this but, one. Yeah, we, we're, I already see a diff big difference, <laughs> okay? 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, but what's the difference here, guys? <laughs> I, do, 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 do. Yeah, we don't need to explain, <laughs> I don't think. So, Wade says that 60% of your bushels will come through 7 through 13, which is right in this area. Now, 60%, that's more than half. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, here we got another one that Emma dug up. So, you want to come with us? Mm -hmm. All right, come here. Nine. 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18. 18 right on par there you go but look i this is this is awesome this is a cool visual map just yeah. so you know i mean it doesn't get much better than that all three three almost all three pots you know three bean pots a lot of twos in here not we'll see what happens that's the next thing somebody would be like yeah, but I did a cover crop and I did rye. And my beans don't look that good. Well, here's here's a reason that these brassica blends work so well, especially in this heavy cash crop system that we're in where it's like corn and beans and it's really hard to integrate another rotation into that, is that brassicas will grow fast, they establish fast, they canopy fast. So that helps with weed management. Number two, they really suck up a lot of phosphorus potassium, nitrogen, but phosphorus especially. And number three, when they decay in the spring, most of them do, except for your last video. <laughs> some of them They didn't. do, they do. I mean, we had a hard time finding where this cover crop was. So, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's, they, they decay fast and it's an immediate nutrient dump. It releases nutrients faster than 
most species of all this cover crop species that you can work with because they're they have low residue they have very low carbon so it's an immediate nutrient dump so think of it as you got starter on top of your starter especially with the phosphorus aspect and that's why you see uh, crops like corn and beans especially have a major response to like a heavy brassica blend like that yeah and here here you can tell hold these because i'm gonna on camera pick another one because that one was pretty nice just so you know let's just pick another one i don't want to i don't want to be like that so he did literally pull up a random stopped. one okay that's <laughs> it's like the same thing yeah so and the, i mean i don't have to pull all those branches off but i can tell you right now that there is a large chunk of change right there right yeah. in 7 through 13. so yeah, and that's amazing just uh, <laughs> like you could just pick another one and it looks exactly the same exactly so a lot of fibrous roots i mean that is a long you can tell like i'm pretty sure that compass root hit something so the other side said yep let's let's yes. keep going until we hit something so but pretty cool if somebody was going to be a, a purist conservation person they would be looking down this row and they would say that we fell short and where do we fall short on the residue side of things we got a lot of the more mature dwarf essex rape that survived the the winter that adam ended up uh smoking off so they're breaking down a little bit slower but you could see that for as thick and massive as that cover was out here where adam said that it was well above his knees close to his waistline it's almost all gone so what that turns into a problem is then you have a lot of exposed soil but if we see what this looks like right here, you can see all the nice texture of that soil. And you even, I know there's a little bit of moss, but you have this great texture of the soil and you have this great coloration. Where this was worked, it looks different, right? It's a huge we, red roof. Like, granted, we're in a spot where but we have variants in the section where we have that tillage, but it looks different, right? You can see the channeling, you can see we got plating going on shallow and I can, and you saw it in the video that it's plating underneath that as well. But there is nothing to withstand the constant attack of the rainfall that the rain droplets and the flush of water has been giving. And yeah, just completely different. So what do you think, Matt? That's pretty neat. You got dirty even today. I, you know, <laughs> I just love playing in the soil. I really do. But no, this is an amazing uh, field where all you simply did was is that you split applications yep. just to see if there was a variance and it's just amazing just to see just such clear differences yeah and we're only a few feet away so it, it really is amazing and i think i fall in the i'm a row crop guy but i fall in the middle between you know like i've been doing cover crops for a long time but i'm kind of a lot like the people that are watching like not sure they're gonna try it maybe or they've tried it and they don't want to do it I mean I've still been doing it a long time I see the differences it takes two seconds yeah. to dig it up and look and you know you, and you know and kudos to you you do such a great job getting up uh, on your platform you, you explain things so well and you become such a great resource for people on the outside of agriculture and people that are part with it like your, your hardcore farmers and but just doing a simple act where you just split the difference, nothing else fancier past that. And you're able to just unlock so many more secrets to, to your field here. Yeah, so that leads to the question, where does this lead me to go next? You know, so all, <laughs> what I do is I, I grow small grains. So after that, I get in contact with Matt and say, this is what, you know, what do you suggest for a cover crop mix? This is what I'm after. This is what I want to do. He, get, he gets it out to me, I plant it. And so maybe next year we don't do any tillage to it at all. So maybe this was an experiment where I thought the tillage would help and it didn't. Yeah, and but this comes from years and years and years of just building up that knowledge. Like none of us came up with this one morning sure. and said like, I just unlocked the <laughs> secret. It takes, it takes local knowledge and that's even with like farmers like yourself. Yeah, right, to just try things. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, you can always learn something new. So big thanks to Matt for coming out here and explaining awesome. everything. Um, that's why I brought him out here. Big thanks to Emma for getting the plants. And we'll see everybody uh, next time. Yay!